Okay, so we're back with our Cortina. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the carb. Uh, I'm not going to take it off, I'm just going to do it on the car. It's simple enough. I'll just make sure the jets are clear. Now, I do have an idle jet on the side here. You can see where my screwdriver is going in. secondary idle jet, although it doesn't really get used. Some of them don't actually have them, because you're not really idling on the secondary. And all it is is the screw head is a holder for the jet, and jet falls out like that. That one's okay. Generally on these Webers, the uh, primary is a little bit bigger. This is a Weber 3236 uh, DGAV, or sorry, DGEV. That one is clear as well. So on these Webers, You'll see DGV, DGAV, DGEV, DF, etc. The D means downdraft. Uh, the G is G series, there's F. Uh, the G is meant for uh, passenger side intake and the F is meant for driver side intake. It just means it's, they're basically mirrored. But this is a G where it should be an F but it works. And um, the E or the A or no will be um, your choke. A DGV is a manual choke. A DGEV is an electric choke. And the DGAV is an aqua choke or water choke. This car originally had a DFAV. This is a DGEV because it was available. Anyway, we're going to pop the top off now and check the main jets and the air jets and the emulsion tubes. Nice alarm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as you can see, there is fuel in there, and it does not look amazing.
A little bit of crap in that one, not too bad though. I'm trying to do these without sticking my finger in the fuel. That's just unpleasant. crap in the secondary. Hey, not a total blockage. Our mains are clear. Let's check our air jets and our E-tubes. Air jets clear, they usually are. And that E-tube is not the kind I can pull easily. Some of them thread out. A little bit of fuzzies, but mostly clear. That's the second area. Let's check the primary. Yeah, clear. So it's probably not a carburation issue, but never hurts to check. Change the fuel filter and primed it and threw the battery charger on it let's see what happens
vents the timing a touch. Let's try that. Longest it's run in several years. Let's lean her up a little bit. play with it. Uh, you see that water? That is coming out from somewhere between the engine and the transmission. I went to fill it up with some sort of cooling system. She was dry. Heard water running. Turned the hose off. Could still hear water running. And that's that. So Sounds like she blew a frost plug at some point. Uh, the first year it was in storage, it had water in it. I thought I made it early enough to drain the water out before it started freezing. I must have just missed it. So there's that. Um, that it is pretty much going to be an all stop on this engine for now, at least until I can pull it out. And um, hopefully, it's just that and it didn't uh, crack the block, but I mean, you never know, right? But that's okay because I've been sitting on this silver top uh, Z Tech out of a 95 contour for about six years now. Um, this past summer, that is a it's buried. It's a T5. The transmission's out of a '96 V6 Mustang. Uh, bell housings from a 2.3 Mustang. I like the V6 transmission because it has a slightly taller first gear. Um, the four-cylinder ones are geared a little bit too low, in my opinion. But this with a What's it out of? An 88 
Uh, Turbo Thunderbird 2.3 clutch disc matches the splines on that transmission. It's nine and a half inch diameter, which is more or less the same diameter as a Focus. I'm going to use a Focus flywheel and a Focus pressure plate, pressure plate with that clutch discs I have somewhere, so around somewhere. Uh, I need the bracket for the crank sensor. Uh, this is an automatic engine, they're different automatic to manual. So I got to track that down, that's the only hard part. But once I get that, I can bolt it all together. I have an ECM for this engine. It's from an automatic, but it might still work. We'll have to see. But this engine, that transmission, some custom mounts in that car. So yeah, that's uh, where we're at right now. Oh, so that's the uh, foreseeable end of this engine. I always kind of said if I take this engine out another time, it's not going back in. Uh, we'll see. I could probably have it out in an hour, but I don't feel like doing it today. Um, so basically my options for repower are either going to be that ZTEC or like a 2.3 Lima out of a Ranger, if I can find an early one that didn't have the 8 spark plugs, that would be ideal. And uh, a carbed intake as well would be really nice. So I could keep it all carbed and distributor and, you know, simple to run and all that. Anyway, that's, um, I guess, going to be the end of this for a while. Uh, thank you for watching, keep you updated, and I hope you enjoyed.